Okay, now let's have a look at uh, how the assignment is programmed. I just showed you a bit of context. Um, if you click the edit button, it will quite quickly give you an idea of how this works. Um, what you can see is that in the text where uh, initially we saw numbers, now you can see that all the numbers uh, are actually uh, variables which variables uh, are using the same syntax, all starting with a dollar sign, which we also know from some programming languages. And uh, you can also see which parts of the question are variable. So the length, in this case, I think we kept it constant. So it's a, a variable with a constant value. The diameter was, was changing. So was the load consisting of permanent uh, and variable loads and su uh, summed up part. Uh, these were constant values and the friction angle was also kept, uh, was also stored as a variable. Well, then uh, let's have a look at uh, how these variables are, cal are calculated. And for that we need to go to the algorithm. Uh, let me check. I have to zoom out a little bit. Oh, here we are, algorithm, uh, which is effectively a rather simple uh, algorithm. You can see it's uh, consisting of 25 lines of code, uh, which are, well, easy to understand if you have some programming language uh, experience. Uh, first one, like I told, the pile length is a constant one. The diameter is uh, consisting of a range from 250 to 600 with steps of 50 in millimeters. Uh, this is a simple calculation of the area of the pile tip. Uh, the permanent load is also variable between 300 and 500 with the range uh, with steps of 100. So actually there are only three values, 300, 400 and 500 for the permanent, ver uh, the permanent load. The variable load in this case was kept constant and the sum of the two is calculated here. And then the friction angle uh, is a sort of choice menu. It can choose from four different values, which are presented to the students. And uh, from the table that was presented in the question, each of these four friction angles leads to a different NQ value. Uh, well, some uh, calculations are made uh, which basically contain the formulas that also the student needs to apply uh, on paper probably and then fill out the proper answer in the field uh, for, this, for this question. Here you can see the answers, how they are calculated. It's a relatively straightforward calculation and uh, in the end there is a question whether the pile would satisfy the ultimate limit state condition and that's uh, basically a yes-no answer uh, question. Uh, but this is a conditional answer, it depends of course on the parameters that you have and the load. So uh, some students may have to answer this with no and others uh, with yes. Okay. Um, well, that's basically uh, what we need to know about um, the algorithm. Uh, you can even make it more advanced by providing feedback or ch chunking up the question in sub questions that also are uh, let's say uh, interrupted by feedback if you have the wrong answer for example uh, you have the you 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 calculated the unit base resistance uh, not correctly perhaps check this in this theory try again and uh, or maybe you need a hint which formula to use uh, that would cost you a small penalty in the score for the assignment but uh, MapleTA offers all these type of possibilities. In this case, we didn't use those. Um, but it, you can make quite uh, interesting questions which also provide you feedback, which is particularly useful for training purposes. Okay, I hope this uh, made it clear. I will in the next video show some examples of other question types with the parametric uh, parts in it. Thank you for watching.